hey guys and one freaking day i was able to score let me say almost a thousand points trading us 30 simply using the break and retest strategy the video is located here on my channel the link will be at the end of this video but if you have not watched it guys you would not have been able to take advantage of this opportunity join me in one of my live mentorship sessions with my students where i detailed how exactly i was able to capture all of these points let's get right into it guys above that imbalance is going to be my ob now can you go ahead and make a bearish ob there we go and i want you to extend that out Extend it all the way over to the right. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, guys. So Sunday's opening gap, right? Uh, you might hear about it a lot. Maybe you're studying it. Maybe you don't really know too much uh, what to expect with Sunday's open gap. Normally, um, Sunday's open gap, I like to use that gap as imbalance. And I like to use the area above it as sort of like an order block or so. Long story short, guys, I'm expecting price to come back to fill in that gap. So the market may gap travel down. We'll, we'll automatically, I'm looking at that that area that it traveled down as sell side liquidity uh, for a target. But before I make any moves, guys, I want to see the market climb up and fill in the gap. And then I have a target, right? You must know where it is that you want to go, right? Before anything, where it is, where is it that you want to go? Once you know where you want to go, you just have to find the entry to get you there. Right there. Right there is fine. Uh, a little bit over to the right. Right there. That's perfect. So let's go ahead and make that red. Yes. And this is what Smart Money told me. That we're going to go ahead and mitigate that gap. Right? But... We're going to use this area above the gap instead of in a bearish OB. We're going to use it as a what kind of zone? A supply zone. Yes. Great job, Mo. Great job, Ron. A supply zone. Smart Money showed me that this area is, in fact, a supply zone. And that let me know that I should be looking for my opportunities, uh, you know, for a bearish setup. So Ron, I want you to go ahead and identify that first low because this was my first trade of the week. I want you to go ahead and identify that first low. So guys, in the beginning of the week, uh, after it's normally after opening. This is where I like to draw my analysis. Normally, I like to draw my analysis for the entire week. So you never know. It may take you a week to get to your weekly objective. It may take you a day depending on news or anything like that, right? So uh, after the market opens, which is normally on Sunday, I come in, I like to look to see where the gap was, what we're doing. You have to know structure. On the higher time frame, are you bullish or are you bearish? In this case, I was bearish on the higher time frame. We open with a gap. I said to myself, the minute that we come and open this gap, I'm going to start targeting all of the lows that the market creates. And for this uh, week that, that passed, I said to myself, I'm going to break and retest every opportunity um, and avoid, of course, you want to avoid becoming a part of internal liquidity, but I was looking for bearish setups. If you do not know the market direction, you are in trouble. And don't be afraid to not know market direction. Sometimes you have to allow the market to move first to get an idea. If you have nothing, guys, you have to wait for the market to start moving to give you some sort of indication that your analysis is correct. So um, in this in this example that you guys are about to see, not only did I, did I follow my uh, higher time frame objective, I also followed structure. Structure is very important. And last but not least, I like to call this the break and wait, which is that break and retest um, for um, capturing almost a thousand points and maybe a day and a half, one day or two. From that supply zone, the first low that you can identify. Perfect. Yeah, you can go with that one. Yeah, you can go with the green one. It's lower. Perfect. And I want you to go ahead and put a, when you finish marking up, 
I want you to put a short tool and I want you to uh, mark off that trade as my first trade. You could put trade number one. Um, yes. And because I was confident that this, in fact, is, you know, smart money showing me that price is not going above this area, I knew that I could trust my stop loss to be right above this supply zone. Right there is fine. Mm -hmm. And that is my first trade of the week, right? And so, <clears throat> we break structure. What do we look for? When we breach, when we break structure, what are we looking for? After we break a low, we're looking to see what the market has left behind for us, right? So mm -hmm. after breaking that structure, I want you to go ahead and and yes, we're looking for uh, a retest to imbalance. So I want you to go ahead and look for an area that I could take my second opportunity, and this is exactly where I took my se second opportunity yesterday. Um, okay. You mean? Here. Yes, you can put uh, trade trade number one on top of that. Yes, we got that break, and then we got that retest, and then we came we came back down. Did that? Did that? Was that low taken out? No, not this one. No, right. So when that low was not taken out, guys, it let me know that we are going up for buy side liquidity. But as long as my stop loss was above that. Uh, order block, which became a supply zone, I was good to go. So can you go ahead and mark that as the uh, the second and third trade there, Ron? Okay, guys. So I'll just go ahead and explain this again. Because price did not take out that low, I was expecting price to uh, go back and accumulate, possibly taking out some buy side liquidity. Remember, we're following structure. In a downtrend, you want to see lower highs, uh, excuse me, lower, yeah, lower highs and lower lows. Lower lows are important, guys. We want to see lower highs and lower lows. So here we see that we created a lower high, but we failed to keep up with structure. So when we fail to keep up with structure, something, someone is going to be a target for liquidity grab. So because we did not break that low, guys, and create a lower low, I was expecting price to reach back up to possibly take out that high. As long as my stop loss was above this area, I went, once I did notice that we did not, because sometimes you're already in the trade and you you notice something like that and it gets a little bit scary, you can exit the trade, but I decided to stay in. Uh, to this trade and I said as long as it doesn't come up to my stop loss which is uh, right above that zone then I'd be okay uh, with uh, the liquidity grab so if it's going to uh, take you out and you can save uh, some of your profit I would exit the trade but if not if you are in uh, a decent lot size and your risk management is okay then uh, you know you can kind of wait it out look for that liquidity grab you can either re-enter or just leave your position as is so that's what happened in that case guys when we fail to break uh when we fail to keep up with structure expect liquidity grabs you took it from there to here right yes and can you put them like a, a sell side liquidity you can put sell side liquidity so i know that price is definitely coming down for that sell side liquidity but first it's going to retest that area and take out that buy side. And that's exactly what it did. I was not surprised by that. You could go ahead and put that as a uh, trade number two and three there. Cause I did go ahead for that internal liquidity there. I did you. <laughs> uh-huh so guys after the break of structure happened right we're continuing on this is this is this is my trade for yesterday guys I, I i felt good yesterday was like super easy for me i didn't have to do any work because the market was just simply showing me over and over what it wanted to do so we broke that low where ron has that sell side liquidity we broke the low and then i was like okay what am i waiting for now we have that institutional candle that broke the low. Ron, can you go ahead? Yes, that, that yes. That's the institutional uh, yes. candle I, that broke I the seen, low. I seen you coming a mile away, G. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> and I want you to go ahead and put a triangle over that cross, that that doji looking candle right there. Right. Because after breaking that structure, guys, I didn't have to think much about it. I said, what is the market going to come back to do? It's going to come back for some imbalance and it's going to come back to give me another opportunity. And what was I targeting, Ron? Can you go ahead and identify that low? Yes. So my weekly analysis, my 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 Sunday's analysis was able to help me trust myself enough to continue to get into these trades. Now, Ron, where you have that sell side liquidity at, I need you to identify that that candle that kind of broke that sell side liquidity. And above that is that uh uh that OB, which is a supply zone. Order block, it, I believe it was used as a supply zone. And so let's go ahead and mark that as trade number five. And I want you to go ahead and identify that, that uh, the low as well. Yep, if you use this OB right here, you would have taken off. Right over. above it, you would have been stopped out, right? So I'm going to go with... Okay, guys. Oh, by the way, guys, I, I read your comments. I know that my water jug is big. <laughs> but um, if you uh, have a supply zone and um, you come across the market continuing to make lows, but you have like an order block, like in this example right here, this candle actually broke this low. Um, really go in and, and pay attention to the candles that's breaking the low so that you're choosing the right OBs. But in this case, guys, I knew not to choose the order block because it was definitely still a part of that supply zone right so i i went ahead and uh kept my stop loss above that supply zone rather than the the uh the order block because in this case you would have definitely gotten stopped out of your trade Re remember guys as the market continues to move the goal is to kind of get swipe some people out who are uh looking to hold positions right on the way down so um if you are finding yourself uh, trying to determine what to do in a case like this keep your stop loss above the supply zone until we break another low and then you can kind of start to shift your um stop loss down right don't be in a rush to move your stop loss so quickly because you can definitely get stopped out of the trade supply zone because that is where smart money wants to sell let's go ahead and put uh trade number six there ron back at that supply zone stop loss right above the supply zone Back there, okay. This entry, entry right here. Yes, back at the supply zone. That's trade number six, and I'm targeting uh the nearest low that the, that the market created. Right there is perfect, and that's. That was a that was a big one. I probably was the biggest one. Go ahead and identify that uh that sell side. And you guys see how how Tokyo was following the structure from right here. Everything that she got from one, two, three, four, five, and six was all following behind right here and just riding it all the way down, catching every single break and wait opportunity until she got tired. Ron, that leaves us to where we are right now, right? After you go ahead and mark that sell side liquidity there. Okay, so after breaking that structure, what has the market left behind for us? Same thing over and over, guys. That was a really good trading day. I didn't have to do much work. Um, for that trade, as you can see, it was very simple. I didn't have to think much, but even when you are uh, in a trade like that and it's coming to you easy, you still don't wanna be a part of uh, buy side, uh, sell side liquidity, right? You have to be mindful of those liquidity sweeps. If it's becoming too easy, right? Your trades, um, uh, you may expect some type of pullback to uh, wipe out some of that, um, internal liquidity that we have going in there, kind of get out some of the sellers, right? And I want to give a special thank you to Ron. He is one of my star men uh, mentees at my program, and um, he's doing wonderful, and he has his, um, you know, um, he he's getting mentorship from me, and he's uh, spreading the love with his platform. So it's all amazing, guys, and thank you for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned for that break and retest uh, video uh, from before. And uh, subscribe if you're not, guys. This is how you get updated on all of the new videos. Till next time.